my thing. Um, I'm a chiropractor, obviously, been a practice since 2005, I think. Been licensed. I've practiced in Upland over here. Been there for about 20, 22 years now, 23 years. I've been in private practice, partnership. It's been phenomenal. Uh, I do a family practice. Been there forever. Uh, rode the wave through 2008, 2009, recession times. Uh, COVID, obviously, too, hit everybody. Um, it's just we got to keep going, right? If, if we've been practicing more than what's the, what's the stats now? Is when you're in school, they say back then was half of your graduate, half of your class will actually graduate, based on licensing, been through classes, desire, all this stuff too. What's this, What's the rating now? How many years after graduating do people actually stay in chiropractic as their profession, normal profession? What's the? It was back then five years. Might be longer, might be shorter now. We've been practicing more than five years. You've kind of hit that mark to, okay, now I'm in practice. Now I know I'm gonna stay here. I know about five people, top of my, top of my contact list, they're no longer chiropractors. They dropped out, they were in work comp before, maybe PI, they just didn't find their niche. They didn't like the paperwork, they burned down on paperwork all the time. You know, I'm blessed, I have a, chiro I have a manager, she's been there forever, uh, Bonnie, she's my office manager. She loves what she does. She runs the show. I don't do any paperwork per se. I do more of the signing. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that way. Uh, a lot of it is, as you guys know, it's seeing people, right? It's doing this. This is the magic. How do we get people here? How do we get people to understand this as not scary, not risky, but to their benefit, to their health? Again, my background, I started, I started seeing chiropractor turn of the century or before that, back in 97, 98. Um, I was a chemist back then before I became a chiropractor and loved it. I, I saw this as a health profession I can get into. And as you guys know, when we're chiropractors, we have to keep ourselves healthy too, correct? Yes. Right? Okay. If, if you didn't practice long enough, you understand you're going to have shoulder pain, back pain, wrist pain. I have a buddy right now getting surgery for his wrist, my age. You know, once you get surgeries there, at that point, it's almost, okay, how do, now, how do I adjust how I adjust people to make sure I can still do this for a long period of time, you know? And I've been practicing long enough to where I've had, when I, was in, when I was in chiropractic school, ironically enough, lifting weights, what happens? You tear your shoulder. Boom, tear my shoulder first semester. Good times, right? Best time in the world. Why do you do that for? But can we get over that and, and help empathize with our patients when they have pains to get themselves healthy also? One thing my... One thing I did bring a book for you guys to look at and see him pass around. This is Dr. Trigo. He's uh, I met him about two seminars ago. He has a book he brought out in 2020. Very passionate chiropractor in Orange County. Very passionate. Done very well for himself, successful. Uh, but he wants people to understand from patient perspective and doctor perspective too, we have to be passionate about what we do. And he talks a lot about the power of the Pisa form to get people healthy and how to get them there, how to get them to understand the natural health method, not just medications all the time. Okay. Do you guys promote that? Do you guys talk about that sometimes with your patients? That's all right if you want to. My card's in there also too. A lot of it is people come to us for what? For help, right? And what do they come for us? We want to come to us for, we want them to come for us for, hey, I have bad posture, doctor. Or I want to get healthy. I don't have enough energy. We want them to do that, right? Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. But a lot of it is they come initially, for what? For pain, right? This is our number one thing. You can't, you can't get around that. Come for pain, how do we help them understand we're gonna help them differently than medicine, okay? We're gonna help them differently than their doctor with more pills and more pills and more pills. How do we do that? We wanna give them evidence that we can understand their problem, the main problem may be their spine, then from there, progress forward to the chiropractic adjustment. We have to educate our patients, correct? Okay, what's the number one thing we have to start doing more of, and as you guys already do, which I, I, I know you guys already do, communicate with our patients better. Communication. It's always been the number one thing. Doesn't matter if you're in chiropractic or healthcare, whatever it is too. People come to my office, they say my doctor doesn't listen to me. And if the doctor doesn't listen to you, your doctor, your medical doctor, or even your chiropractor too, if your doctor doesn't listen to you, what's the number one thing you lose with a patient? Trust, exactly, okay. If we communicate with our patients well, allows us to really understand they're building, you're building trust with them. They come in going like, I don't know about chiropractic, what is this thing, uh, I'm not sure, but my friend says you can help me. 
I'm desperate. I had someone come in. Uh, she was she's in pain for her uh, in her arm pain for about four months. And goes, it's so bad. I finally wanted to see a chiropractor. I'm like, thanks. Great time to come in. You know, I'll see if I can help you. You know, but a lot of it is, can we get them to go from that to go? Oh, this is how this works. Oh, this is a valid profession. And then build trust with them by listening to them, communicating well with them, so they understand I'm here to help you, and this is what's going to help you get better and stay better. So you may take two, three months to actually feel 100%, but she's going to understand this is a path of not medication, which she's done before, or a path of surgery, which she's, she's, rec she's been recommended before to do, but a path of success to where she can get better and stay better. You guys get those experiences sometimes? Or people come to your house and go, I want a quick fix. I know you're, I can do this in one day. I'm like, no, it's not magic, you know? But can we understand that we can teach them to realize how what we can do overall? So communication. Communicating well to get them here on the table starts with what? Your exam, correct? Okay, your exam. When you, when you do your exam, are you like this on a computer going, okay, Mrs. Jones, let's talk about your birth date. Okay, we have your problem here, here, here. Do you guys do that? Are you guys here with your patient going, hey, Mrs. Jones, I see you, I'm with you, let's talk about what's going on. Paperwork's here, paperwork's over there. Hand, eye, and you're listening to them, you're list that, that hand, the uh, handshake, along with the visual eye-to-eye -eye contact, not the crazy eye look, right? Okay, but enough to where you're with them so they see you. There's nothing where you're, you're not with them per se. And when you're with them, are you practicing the, the universal, if you want to call it communication skills of like attracts like? You guys know what that is? If someone's here sitting like this, do you sit like this? No. You act like they are. If they're, if they're open bodied, you're here. Okay? If they do this, you do this also. If they talk in a high volume, you talk in a high volume. Speed of voice, things like that. What are they? What are certain words that they say you can repeat to them so they understand you're like them? Personality, you know? And just similarities, not identical, but enough similarities to where then you go, they go, hmm, this person seems like he's interested in me. He's interested in what I'm talking about. It's an unconscious way to connect with them off the bat. We, how long do we have to, to connect with somebody, just in general? What's the, what's the time frame? How long do we have? Does someone to go, I like them or not like them? What's the, what's the window? Five minutes, maybe? Maybe five minutes. Now 2024, maybe three minutes. Quick. You know, you go on your social media, Tic Tac, Instagram, Facegram, whatever it is. At that point, you, have, you, ha you go on there and go, okay, do I like this person or not within maybe 30 seconds? We have a very short window to communicate someone who may not even know who we are, even like chiropractic, to tell them, hey, I'm here to help you. Once we do that, then we can go over, once you get that quick or that eye contact or that quick head nod, hey, let's talk about your problem. Do you have this? And they start nodding their head yes, and they start talking more. At that point, that communication, then you have that trust with them. Then, my, my experience is, then you can start going over their problem, correct? Once you communicate with them and get that trust, then the communication starts with, Here's your problem, your sciatica problem, your neck problem, your back problem, your headache problem. Let's go over how we can help you. Then you're going to start doing this, right? Okay? Communicate with them well to get them over here. I have patients every day come in my office, go, I don't know, I, I want your help, but I don't want, I don't want to get adjusted. I'm like, this will be fun. <laughs> you're in the right place. So then they go, okay, that makes sense. I should get adjusted because now you've explained that nerve is being pinched from that part of the spine, from that part of my overall posture being a problem, from having for a long term, this medication that's helping me, let's try this instead, right? Okay, so can we talk to our patients more in detail for the first five minutes to get them to understand you're here to help them? And I'm obviously I have a, a, uh, basically a, a diagram of the spine, the lateral spine, lateral lumbar, lateral cervical, you guys probably do too, so they have the visual too. How do people learn? What's, what's their pro, what's, the, what's the five things that they learn? Visual, auditory, um, sense of smell, touch. There's one more I'm missing. 
So if you can get some of those three or four of those, so they, you, 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 they, un, they start to learn how they learn allows them to actually absorb your information, understand, right? I can talk all day long, but if no one understands what I'm saying, they're gonna go, mm, whatever. I want someone to under, leave my office the first visit, understanding the process of where their problems are, what, how I'm gonna help them, and their first adjustment was helpful, okay? The adjustment itself, too, when you get down to that, and we'll go over this in a second, too, is a lot of it is can we get people to understand this adjustment is safe when it's done the right way. What I mean by that is I did a video on, on uh, understanding the risk of chiropractic. Have they had trauma before? Have they had any cardiovascular issues, for one, too? How are you going that with your patients, for one, also? Have they seen, have they seen a chiropractor before? Seen a chiropractor before, does that help you not have any red flags? It helps me. So when you have someone to go, when you ask the right questions, you've been practicing long enough, you go, okay, I've asked the questions, no trauma involved, no cardiovascular issues for one, two, no blood pressure issues long term, and nothing to where they've had problems before and they've seen a chiropractor before, good, let's go for it. Okay, when we can do that and get that experience with our patients, having your routine questions all the time, or red flags you're looking for in your paperwork too, then it gives you the green light to do this to get them better. This is my quote I have in my office. This is what I use in my office every day. This is when they walk in the office. When someone walks in the office, they read this, they go, okay, it goes, beneath every treatment or procedure, there is a life which is loved by someone, a person of dignity and worth, who is unique in the eyes of God, right? The task of, every, of a physician is to cure occasionally, relief often, and the comfort always. So walks in there, they go, eh, no problem, no big deal. But when they leave, they go, oh, that's what he meant. Oh, that's what that doctor meant. That's what that chiropractor meant. That's how you help somebody, right? Okay. This is my, this is my office since I was, I'm the fifth doctor in my office, I think. Most of them passed away. I don't know. They've left. They retired. But a lot of it is because of that, it's been there for a long time. I just moved back. I moved January 2nd to a new office, new location, upgrade. And we brought that with us too. That's our front door. My office manager, she's, she's been there forever. She wanted that by our front door. That's how people leave our office. They go, that makes sense now. Because your first impression how many times did you guys already know you get to make a first impression? Once. One time. So you have to be with them all the time. This is my, my thing with my patients. So we can do that. Sometimes this is going to be their benefit. Sometimes we talked about red flags. Can, it, can we go, ah, eh, let's get an MRI first. I have x-rays in my mouth, take the x-rays in my mouth all the time. That's my thing. That's our pre-exam per se. If not, let's get an x-ray. Let's get some blood work. Let's get figure out what's going on before we bring you in, what's, what's, what's your health issues to make sure we're, because we're, we're, we're also primary care physicians, correct? We have to be there, understand the medical history so they know they're in the right place. This is, does not become a risk to them for one, two. Who here is in private practice by themselves, solo? Solo? Okay, okay, you guys are together. Together solo, I get it, get it. Anyone, who anyone else in solo practice? Are you guys all in partnerships? Good, good, okay. And if you guys want to, let me know. I can, we're, we're gonna have an adjustment demonstration. You wanna be the demonstratee, go for it, it's up to you, you know? If you guys wanna get adjusted, it's up to you. But a lot of it is, when we talk about the adjustment, when you're in, a, when you're in the room with the patient, how do, you, how do you first set them up? What do you have them do? I, bring up my, I have my staff bring them in the office, have them wait a few seconds, have them read a pamphlet, they have neck pain, here's a pamphlet on neck pain. So again, I want them to learn the, the way they wanna learn. Once I've gone over the x-rays with them in my room, in my our x-ray room for one, two, we have a view box and screen, whatever it is, the output computer. Then we go, okay, here's now the room, here's your pamphlet on neck pain, sciatica, neuropathy, uh, headaches, whatever it is too. Then we go, so I'm gonna have you sit in the room for a couple minutes. Just let them sit and relax, okay? Have them lie down, okay? They've been sitting here doing paperwork, right, in your office? If they didn't come with paperwork already, paperwork. Okay, you bring them to the exam room. They're here the whole time. They're listening the whole time. They're doing this, right? When we sit, is that stress on our back? Yes. I, go, I have them lie down for about five minutes in the room. Just relax, close your eyes. Oh, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. We get our patients to relax for about three to four minutes, five minutes or so. Just sit in the room and just let them kind of settle everything in. When we relax and don't move and close our eyes, do we think better? Can we absorb information better? 
get our body to now, whatever this doctor's been saying for five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes to me, now I can let it kind of marinate in my head to go, this is why I'm in the room. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. At that point, you give yourself time also as a chiropractor to go, okay, how do I want to treat this patient? Do I want to be aggressive? Do I want to be kind of light with them? What do I want to focus on? Maybe their neck or back. Do I want to do it seated? Do they have shoulder issues? What are the problems that they may have besides their spine you can help them with? They've mentioned to you too, probably, or the treatment room, exam room, if you ask these questions, you've had pain for four months now, Mrs. Jones. Um, has it affected you where you feel overstressed? You guys ever ask that question? Does anyone ever ask that to where you go? I've had it for, for a long time, I, and this is defined as what, chronic pain, correct? Chronic pain, neck, back pain, headaches, whatever it is to sciatica, arm pain like she had. I go, if you go, I've had it for four months now, or long enough, and you can, maybe, you can tell too, when you talk to someone for five minutes, can you tell if they're stressed or anxious or just quiet, you know? Sometimes even like short with your staff, like my staff will say, man, she's grouchy. Yeah, I'll find out why. How about you go like, okay, this has upset already. It's only nine in the morning on, some, on Monday. But a lot of it is, once you get to that point, okay, now I know there's an emotional maybe link to their pain. So once we get that, is that a way to go to slowly get yourself into that, that conversation is, are you feel overstressed sometimes? Do you feel like hmm, sometimes you don't sleep very well? They go, yeah. And once, they, once you see that they don't sleep very well, what is, that, what is sleep or a lack of REM sleep or deep sleep usually a, a, a effect of on their body? What's it come from normally? What, what, what causes sleep to become less, uh, less, I guess, relaxing or recovery or recharging? What do you think that is? What's that? What did we learn in school? That fight or flight, right? Okay. When someone... Parasympathetic. Okay. Your auto, again, autonomic system, right? If you have an autonomic system here, autonomic on top, on, you guys get visual, autonomic, parasympathetic, sympathetic, rest and relax, sympathetic, parasympathetic, fight or flight. Okay. No, ah, see, backwards. I'm dyslexic sometimes. So parasympathetic is your rest, rest and relax, right? Okay. Parasympathetic, less relax, sympathetic uh, is going to be your stress response. And then your stress response, if you're not sleeping well as a patient, as a person, at that point, if I'm in pain long enough, it's affecting my sleep, I can't relax. I'm going to feel overstressed. Next question is, sometimes do you feel anxious? They go, mm, sometimes. If it's a guy, I go, do you sometimes you feel just kind of upset or angry as a guy response? They go, sometimes. You know, is that, is that happened more since you've had the pain? Yeah. So then they go even go to, if you want to go as far as you want, do you sometimes you feel depressed? Has you talked to your doctor about this, your medical doctor, with the pain you're having now? Go, yes, and the doctor wants to put you on psychological medication, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication. I had a patient come in. She's 25 years old, diagnosed with, well, she has a problem with her neck pain and shoulder pain and lack of sleep, insomnia, for seven years. Seven years until I saw her last year. She was put on psych meds four years ago because her doctor said, you don't have a physical problem, you have a psychological issue. She doesn't have a psychological issue. Treat her for two months, sleeping better, no pain. We can help a lot of people get over, I have a problem here causing the pain versus an actual physical problem. We've all gone through that, correct? I've seen patients where like, man, how's this person gone through the medical system that, that if you want to call that rabbit hole, had never gotten the help. I'm glad I saw her at 25 versus 35, 45. She had a problem for another 10 years and 20 years. You know, when you can catch people that well to understand, give them that link of their physical pain is causing the sympathetic to cause the stress response to cause fight or flight, then walk them through that process in, in layman terms, correct? How many, people, how many people do you know, doctors or healthcare practitioners, anybody, when they talk, they talk like you're back in school taking a test. It's like, ugh, painful, you know? I have a podcast that I do. When I, when I have a podcast, I usually, I usually like a quick uh, interview or talk to my guests. And, I, and if they haven't done podcasts before or been interviewed before, I tell them, because they'll start talking about doctor language and big words and more than three syllables, I get lost. I go, I don't know what you're talking about. I go, let's talk to our patients like we would like a normal person. 
simple words, simple things that they can understand. They go, oh, okay. Because you got, you're talking about people, and I want people to understand my message, right, about being a chiropractor, what I do, the nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic, um, autonomic system, all that stuff, too. They go, uh, you're way over my head. Let's bring it down to their language. Because if they can understand their language, they can understand you. How you and again, if they understand you, you understand, they can understand you're going to help them get better. Right? Is that the key? For all of us. You know? So once you go back to that, the, the system of sympathetic, parasympathetic, stress response, you can understand that's going to help. Um, am I going to help their sleep? Does that make sense now to them? If I just go off the bat, hey, I see you're coming in and you have uh, back pain, neck pain, and insomnia, I'm going to help you sleep better. They're going to go, uh, is this magic? How does it work? What's going on? So we understand is that when you get that link with your patient and talk to them in, in their language, how they want to be understood and also understand, then we get them to actually go, okay, I'm here for pain, but also I'm here to get my sleep better. So then if I sleep better, then I feel less, I have more energy, correct? I have more energy, I feel, do I feel more sad or more happy? And I always do this with my patients too. I give them two options, two words. I want, them, I want them to make a choice. I want to hear their voice say exactly what they want. I go, if you're in less pain, are you going to be able to do more things? Yes. Am I going to have more energy? Yes. Are you going to have less energy, more energy? Are you going to have, are you going to have what else can you do in your quality of life to make sure what our benefit is not just pain relief, but also healing so your life gets better? You have people that come in your office on a bunch of medications all the time. They feel like that's just their normal day. I had a patient come in. He's only like 32 and been in that person for about six months now. You know? And, and it's like, like my doctor said, I said, I just need it. I'm like, really? Your doctor says that? I go, um, let's, do you want a better option? He goes, yeah, it didn't make sense to me. I, and I tell him, too, as you guys probably do too joke with him, is naproxen, you're not naproxen deficient. It's not part of your natural health, right? So can we under, get our patient to understand, and sometimes, in a joking way, get them to understand what their health should be? And what, what's two things, two things in health that make us unhealthy, being deficient or overdosed on something? We talk about lifestyle, too. We do that also. But can we people understand, once you get the, under, the adjustment to that point, then you have an opportunity to help them get better. When you do the adjustment, and once we've had them lie down for about five minutes or so and kind of sit in the room and relax and absorb the material we just talked to them about and let, them, let things marinate, I want to, when, they, when I come back in the room, I want to see how they're responding. Do you guys do that? Do they sit up right away? Do they kind of sit there and kind of, and, and how are they breathing too? In the sense where can we actually get them to understand that this is a way to relax your body, not feel more tense? And when you, have, you guys probably have a bunch of stories also. When you adjust someone for the first time, what are the three reactions you, you expect? What are the common reactions, physical reactions that you expect? What are those three? What happens? Ouch. Ouch. Like, whoa, what the heck was that? What else? What else do you guys think? Deep breath. Is there, do they ever laugh? Oh my gosh. I had a Claudia. She would cackle for like 30 seconds every time. Not the first time, every time. I got a video too, it was great. Some people have, when you adjust someone, they cry. Emotional release, that's what happens. They go, it's not bad, it's just they're, they're releasing their emotion, right? Everyone's different. Some people, in your, in, when you adjust them, have speaking tongues. In the sense where they have Tourette's. They say something that's not appropriate. It happens. You know, or they speak in their own language, whatever it might be. So that, I always, I always go, this is your first adjustment, I'm excited for you to see your reaction, what's going to happen. So once, we, once, you, once you make it a, an event for them, because you're excited for them, I think they, it helps your patient go, wow, this is important. This is my first adjustment ever. This is important to me. They, versus if you go, hmm, lie down, get adjusted. Okay. How many people have had, pe had patients from other chiropractors that weren't happy with their treatment there. Huge. And I love when they call the office, they go, I'm upset, I saw this chiropractor, 
I want to go see you. I'll see you guys instead, but I'm, I don't know if I want an adjustment. I'm like, this is going to be so much fun. Great times. Thanks. Thanks, Doc. But when you get that, you almost want to know, and this is part of playing poker, I guess, what did they say or do inappropriately that made that person upset? It doesn't have to be illegal or, or a liability or a malpractice problem, but what made them not want to go back to that chiropractor? What made them emotionally not want to go back? May they not have helped them. It may not have given expectation to that patient where I'm going to get you better in one visit. Okay, or it's going to go away right away. You know, or it might have been financial too. Everyone has things, right? That person wanted to sell me a $3,000 package the first day. So you have to find out what it is or when they adjusted them, they felt worse and didn't explain it. How many people adjust, when you adjust someone, especially with neck pain and or headaches, um, where they have a headache afterwards? Me, yesterday. You know, I said that's, and what is that response when you, when you get that reaction? What, what's, the, what's, what's your response? What do you guys usually say? So you go, oh crap, let's sit in the hospital. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> no, I, my explanation to Ari yesterday was you have cryostonics on both sides. We adjusted your neck. What happens is before the adjustment, those arteries to your carotid sinuses, your thermostats, were constricted. They were basically constricted based on the stress of your nerves, causing them to stay constricted. Once you release that pressure in your neck, once you release those, that nerve pressure, then those, those carotid sinuses, then we're able to vasodilate, release the pressure, and then that allowed the flow from your body to go to your head more initially to even things out. That change in pressure caused your headache. So part of it is we have to explain it properly with confidence. At that point they go, oh, that makes sense. You know, how many people get the, get the reaction sometimes from not even you guys or, 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 a, or going reacting to a patient just in general in life or someone, you ask someone something, they go, oh, that's bad. Oh, no. I had someone to change my water heater out. And it was, it was funny. A real nice guy, older guy, and, and uh, he, solo, solo guy, family business. He goes, and he tried to light it up and, and didn't work. And he's like, he's like, oh, this is bad. This is really bad. I'm like, Dan, don't make me more upset than I already am. I don't know, I'm paying 1000 bucks, but just get it fixed. You know? It's sometimes if we don't overreact to something and we control our own emotions as a chiropractor, it gives the, the patient the confidence that they're in the right place. You know, it, it's everyone's different. I even had someone one time when I was adjusting them, I adjusted her, I adjusted her seated and she punched me in the face. You guys ever have that? Good times. I was like, Sarah, what the heck? She, she's a police officer. That was her reaction. So since then, I adjust someone from a different angle so I can stay out of their, their right hook. It's, it's going to happen. It, it's so, you guys have so many stories, probably more than me, how react, people reacted to your adjustment and how things work. Other things, when you, after you adjust somebody, what do you do after you're done adjusting your neck, mid-back, low-back, shoulders, ankles, whatever you're doing in your practice? What is your next step? Once you're done, do you have them sit up? Do you have them stand up? See how it feels? See what's going on? I go, I go, I tell them when you have, when, you, when you're ready, I'll help you up. Let's have you stand up, see how you feel. And I, and I pause, I wait. They go, I go. And then once they stand up, they relax for a second. Go, how is that? They go. And what's the, what's the normal, what's the normal reaction from the first adjustment? When you least saw that pressure. What do you, what do you usually hear? Lighter relief. Less pressure, more range of motion, more movement. But a lot of it is just feel more relaxed. Sometimes you don't have to wait till even they say anything. You can see it on their face, correct? We have to read our patients better. When we can do that, we can, we can understand what are they going through. Sometimes you get a response of, feels about the same. I go, good. They say they feel lighter. I say, good. Whatever they say, I'm going to say good because that's the reaction I expected for them to get through. But if they say, Man, it feels a little bit more tight. I go, oh crap, here we go. No, you have to make sure again, you're going to be with them to give them the confidence they're in the right place. Any questions yet? You guys, you guys have been practicing long enough. This is, I'm here to warm you guys up for the whole day. You're going to be here for like, I think for 36 hours, something like that. It's a two day process. No, but can we get, can we understand that this is the best part of the chiropractic visit, but also after you're done with the patient, 
you want them to have the effect, that, again, first impression is always important, of I'm in the right place because I stood up and now I feel relief. I stood up, I, now I, I stood up, now I feel what the doctor was expecting me to feel. Right? Okay, if we can do that, then we get our patient to understand, this is going to help me not only today, but also the next day and my next visit. I'm going to understand over time how they're going to react, but they want to come back again. What, how many people get the, how much, how much times have you had, I've been practicing for 22 years, something like that, 23, 4 years, is where you get one visit done, like, okay, you're fixed, you're done. No, oh, great, I'm out, I'm out of here. Thanks, doc, I'll see you in five years. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Because at that point, when you see them, you have to give them an idea of, a, this is going to take time. This didn't happen in, in overnight. It took four months, five months, six months, sometimes years to get where you are. So we help them understand, you feel good now, great. Then from there, now here's the process of getting you well. You're, I said, your one visit, fantastic. This will feel but good for maybe about 20 minutes. Sorry, burst your bubble. But can we go from there? Go, now it's 20 minutes. So long term, can we see you enough, if that's what they require, to get themselves healthy? So this goes away for 20 minutes, half a day, a full day, two, three days in a row. So we see the full benefit of them getting better and staying healthy. How many of you, when you're done with the adjustment, go over exercise with them or stretching or health guide and stuff? You guys do that? Good, good, good. I have, what I do my, I have my, like I said, a podcast, a YouTube channel. I've done a lot of videos of back pain exercise relief, exercises, neck pain, headaches, all that stuff too. I have them on my YouTube. What I do with my patients is my own thing. I have the staff get their email and I send them the videos. And what I do also before I leave their first visit, walk them to two or three. And over time, as you do more and more, I want them to understand that I'm here to help them get healthy, not just their adjustment. So part of it is I'm going to show them a back exercise, a neck exercise, um, a shoulder exercise, maybe an ankles or knees, whatever it is too. And I want to have them do that exercise at home, say twice a day, ice afterwards. I'll send this in an email and I go, when I see you next visit, tell me how they felt. Does that help with compliance? People go to the gym all the time, right? What happens in January? What's, what's the January effect of the gym? We're all, all gung-ho. Let's start over again. I had French fries for 12 months. Let's burn them all off and as soon as we can, right? I love French fries. That's my favorite thing, French fries. But a lot of it is, once we get to that January effect to go, what happens in, what's happened January 1st? We sign up, we're ready to go. And what, happen, what do most gyms do? Box gyms, franchises. You get a year contract. Right? It's not month to month. No, that would be too easy. Some are, somebody month to month, like crunches and other ones are plan offenses too. But you go like, I'm going to get in there. What happens the first day? They, they work out. They work out like they're 20 years old again, if they're 30 or, or 50 like me. At that point, they feel great the same the first day. What happens the first day? They have adrenaline. They feel like, this is easy. They wake up the next day and go, what did I just do to myself? Toast. Right? They go, okay, now I can't move. They've woken everything up they haven't done for the last say, a few months or so, maybe a year. So we get them to go, okay, that's going to be our chance, in a sense, for the adjustment, going back to the adjustment, is now they may feel pain or may feel soreness, then we can get them over that over time. Get them that this is not a January effect, it's going to be a long-term thing, so with the stretch we're going to give you today, and the exercise we're going to have you do at home, will help you now guide them into a routine of going back to a gym or a home gym setting or workout routine so they can stay healthy. Uh, and, and with your patients too, you probably do the same thing with me, is do you ever go with your patient, how often do you stretch? And when you, when you ask that question, do you sit back and pause and wait for their answer? If they take more than three seconds to answer, you already know their answer, correct? Take more than three seconds to answer your question, you know the answer is either none or not enough or not the right ones. So I want to make sure when I first see them, I'm giving them stretches their first day. Because when, when, when someone gets for adjustment, what happens to their spine before the adjustment? What's happening for the while until they came in your office? It's gotten tighter and tighter and tighter, right? That joint in their spine has gotten tighter and tighter and tighter. What happens, what, is, what can, controls the joint connection? Ligaments. Ligaments have now shortened in their spine. Muscles, because of that, outside have now shortened also. So you have to start stretching more. And when you help someone stretch, 
What are you looking for in the stretch? What do you look for when you're, where you're causing, helping them stretch, guiding them through that? What's, what's the one you want to look for in their, in their body language, per se? What do you guys look for? I'll look at their face. I go, when I see their face kind of like grimace or squinch a little bit, I go, that's where I want you to feel when you stretch. Not pain, we're garden titans, but enough to where they feel like a little bit of grimace and they go, I want you to feel uncomfortable when you stretch. Because they're not, when they're in pain, their sensitivity to pain is very small, very minimal. So by having them to where they feel a little uncomfortable, they're going to know that that is going to work. I'm going to, we're going to cause a health benefit, make the ligaments and muscles stretch again because they've been stuck for so long. When I say pain, it's going to be, I explain to patients, where when you stretch, it kind of stays tight and doesn't want to release at all. It almost wants to guard even more. So I walk through them like, you want to feel that release, that little bit of uncomfortableness. So that stretch, you want to hold that for, say, 30 seconds to a minute. So at that point, the body can stretch. When you're stretching the spine, are you stretching ligaments or muscle? Kind of went over already. Ligaments, correct? Ligaments connect bone to bone, normal physiology. Do ligaments require, in my sense, this, I guess me, that works with my patients, a more constant stretch versus a back and forth stretch. I don't want to do this, stretch your back. I want them to hold the stretch longer in that position for 30 seconds to a minute. So at that point, they feel the overall stretch with the ligaments and muscles to decompress their body versus stay compressed. Do you talk about your patients about flexion or extension? What's important, how that works? Again, this is part of posture too. But I talk to patients to kind of break it down before posture is we want our body to extend more in, in going further back. So a lot, of my, a lot of people stretch a lot, correct? They stretch going forward. They do things like this, back and forth, calisthenic stuff. So can you stretch backwards with my patients? That point allows them to now open up their body and learn that their body needs this extension, not the overall flexion you're used to. Because all day long, what they, when you talk to your patients, even when they're sitting in the, for their adjustment too, do you go with them, do you ever ask your patients, because a lot of people have problems with sitting, correct? When they come in your, bed, your, bot, your, your office, do you ask them, how do you sit? And, they, they, and I tell them, just, how do you sit? And they go like this, usually, here, or maybe even here, over a desk maybe too. I have my patients, because it's a normal thing for me, had them sit forward in the chair. I tell them the back of the chair is for decoration. It's for decoration. So sit forward, feet underneath you, knees below your hips. At that point, shoulders coming back, chin back here a little bit. I always ask him too, does that feel uncomfortable? Nine, 10 times, yes, uncomfortable. I go, fantastic. I want you uncomfortable stretching, uncomfortable sitting so we can change your body long-term to make your body stay here, better position, better posture, hint. At that point, you don't have to see me so much. I'm too busy as it is, that's why I tell my patients. But can we do things certain to allow them to understand you're here to help them long-term with now, as you go through their exam, their x-rays, if you take x-rays, their adjustment, to understand now the cause of their problem, if it's non-traumatic, is usually posture, right? COVID, everything we went through, sat for so many, so many months, years, for one, two. So at that point, we get back to how do we change now, help them long-term, they sit for work, even stand too, stay back here, heels but underneath them, knees below their hips, body up, so long-term understand is going to be part of their long-term healing process. And again, I sent them a video on, on stretching, on how to sit, how to stand, how to walk, how to move. I, I, want my, I want my patients educated, as you guys do too, that this is a benefit because the adjustment allows their body now to realign their spine so their exercise, their sitting, their standing, their walking, their everyday moving becomes easier. I tell patients, if you work out now, fantastic, just don't stop working out. We're going to make your body feel good so you can work out, it doesn't cause any pain. If you, do your, if you have to sit for a drive for a long to go to commute to work, boom, let's make sure that sitting is easier for you. Let's get your back looser and stronger by the adjustment, allows things to lengthen again. At that point, the muscles get stronger to have more endurance, correct? A lot of it is physiology, as you guys already know this. If we can change, help someone's physiology, those nerves relax, go from a, from a constricted state to a relaxed state, then our body can actually move better. And the movement is what they want. They don't want, they don't want the chiropractic visit. Adjustment's great, right? It's magic. But they want the benefit of the adjustment. When you give them, when you tell them the link is your pain, adjustment, pain goes away, then your life gets easier, 
does that, does that kind of give them an idea how to make their overall body better so at that point the pain goes away? When we link it that way, I think with our patients, which I've done for many, many moons, at that point allows them to actually feel the benefit so they stay healthy. Okay. Anyone want to get adjusted? You guys all good? Great? Want to get adjusted? Sure. Come on over. I'm going to walk through a patient nah, visit with you guys. First visit, patient. Jacket off, sir. You know. No keys, Walton. You just start in your, in your pocket. Nothing sharp. It's going to affect me. Nah, it's fun. Where do you practice? In uh, Rancho. Awesome. Awesome. Where in Rancho? Uh, El Salomo. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Upland over here in Off Mountain. Tony. S Steven. Steven, nice to meet you. Grab a seat, sir. So, anything going on today? No. Cool. Let's say a little, little back pain. Cool, cool. Do you work out a lot? Work out? Good, good. And uh, are you solo practice? Yes. Good, fantastic. What's your workout routine normally for your lower back or just your overall body? What's, what do you do? I walk uh, an hour every day in the morning. Uh, fantastic. A lot of stretching and then once in a while resistance training. Fantastic. Once, once in a while. Why is that important? As young, you're, you're 22, how old are you? I'm 22. How? 33. <laughs> 33. Yeah. 50, I'm 50. Yeah. You're, you're looking at yourself and, and what I like about that, you have a routine you already do to stay healthy for a long career, right? Yep. Kids, family? Yeah, two kids. How old? Seven and four. I apologize. No, no. So they're the workout. Yes. Yeah. I have 21, 21, 24, and 30. I think as far as I get, that's as far as I know. That's all I have, as far as I know. But, and again, you're, you're, in, the, you're in like the ah, middle of the first quarter of a football game with right. kids. Yeah. So how do you balance out your family life with your, your work? How do you, how do, you do that? Um, mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, it's hard. I agree. So, you know, honestly, just try to be, uh, just try to be as available to them as I can because they're only going to be this age once anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah and four is still pre. Is that kindergarten or no. pre-K? So she's going to be in TK. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You have a while to go, my yeah. friend. Yeah, I became a chiropractor myself because I wanted to spend time with my kids. Yeah. You know, be in the classroom yeah. with them. Yep. I remember one one grandfather told me one time in the classroom. Why are you here? I'm like, I'm just here to help out. I was like, are you writing a book or something? I'm like, no, I'm just here to, yeah. I'm here to actually just enjoy being with, with family. Yeah. I think, well, who became a chiropractor to live an active and healthy lifestyle? A, a lot of us did, right? A lot of us were, and even, and when, what's your first experience as a chiropractor? What do you, what, what's your first chiropractic experience? Okay, so I thought I was gonna be a PT. Okay, yep, and, a lot of people, a lot of chiropractors. You know, so I, I interned, mm -hmm. I went to Long Beach State, interned at a, at a awesome. clinic, and, uh, and I'm like following this PT, I'm shadowing him, and I'm like, what's going on over there? There's a chiropractor, mm -hmm. this guy, you know, it's cracking the whole yeah, thing. What's going like, on? Let me go check that out. Mm -hmm. So that was my first experience. Yes. You know, it was by mistake. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly. It, it was, it was yeah. serendipitous. Yeah. Big round of the news very often. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, good, good. So, yeah. How, and how long ago was that? This was, uh, I guess we're 12. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 12, 13 years. Did you stay local? I went to LACC or the call now Southern California University Health Sciences. Yeah, Excuse. Yeah. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. How's your experience at school? It was good. Good, yeah, good, good. good. And did you intern while you're in school or volunteer at all? This was before, so okay. while I was in undergrad. Undergrad, okay. Yeah. And then when you're in chiropractic school, did you do interning or volunteering or check out different offices? Yeah, for sure. I wasn't cool. not not anywhere that I went uh, from a schedule standpoint, like you know, routinely. Sure. Not until I got to clinic. Good, good, good. Yeah. And then, why did you, and did you live in Rancho before or live somewhere no, I was else? Living in Laverne. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. okay. So it's kind of out of the area. And do you guys know where Laverne is, Rancho? If you guys don't, it's just like two cities over. Yeah. We're, we're small towns. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it's funny because I have pages that come from Laverne, like, such a long drive up. I'm like, you are so lazy. Yeah. You have no idea what. If you live in LA, it's like, as you know, with school, it's yeah. like, did you live in Laverne while you're going to come back to school? Yes. Yeah. Painful. Yeah, that was a drive. Yeah, I was, I was living in Upland when I went to chiropractic school. There was no 210 freeway back then. Yeah. But like horse and buggy, I think. I don't know what happened back in the day. But a lot of it is when you came out of school, how did you find you wanted a solo practice versus associate? What was your thing? Well, I started out as an associate. Awesome. Right out of school just to try to learn the business. Good. You know, because it was all about just getting your adjustment numbers in school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really about how to run it. And, and when I say, because I talk to a lot of interns that, are, that come to my office from the joint or from other students too that come in, but I also kind of want to figure out what chiropractic is and how to run a practice. A lot of the school is great to pass the boards. Yeah. Do you still have Irene Gold back then too? Yeah. 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 
right, pass the boards, get your license, boom, and learn how to practice. Yeah. And then how did you learn the business side of it? What did you do? So that, that's where I just ask questions. Perfect. Just, yeah. Good. You know, and I, and I, I was an associate at uh, three different offices. Awesome. Because I just thought, let me see a few different ways to run it. You know, Smart. You know, take what I like and don't like. Yes. Yeah. Well, and you, you, you spent the time and energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I, when I was coming out of school, I, uh, I already, evolved, I, back then we didn't have the internet. Mm -hmm. We had this thing called the yellow pages. You guys know what that is? Yellow pages back then? That was our thing. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty old. I'm pretty old. Ancient, pre-century, um, pre-century. But, but that's what, I, I came out of school and my first semester, I think it's still 10 semesters, yeah. I took the yellow pages, took the, the alumni list from the school and matched up people in Rancho, Upland, Claremont, and took the first four or five ads and called them. Okay, I want to come and volunteer. Yeah. And I volunteered with about two or three of them. And by the time I was school, I already had a associate job lined up, but it took the time and energy to actually figure out what I want to do, who I want to practice with, based on their personality, what they did. So you absorbed the information and then moved on. Right. And then why, how has solo practice been for you? It's been great. Fantastic. You know, I just feel like, yeah, I feel like I, um, I have that control over my life, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so. Good for you. It's, just, it's, it's not work anymore, you know? And it is, but you know what I'm saying. What do you mean by not being, I, I know what you mean, but what do you mean? How would you verbalize that not being work I anymore? I feel like I have to go to my job every day. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your favorite day of the week? Day I wake up. <laughs> yeah, what, what day of the week, though? Uh, I know we're, when you get older, it's like you just want to breathe. Okay, I'm alive today. Yeah. No, yeah. What's your uh, favorite day of the week? I like Thursday. Why Thursday? I, because uh, I feel like I wrapped up, I, it's a sense of wrapping up my week. You got like 8% of the work done Monday through Wednesday. Okay, now I can actually yeah. get ready for the weekend. Yeah, but I, but I kind of uh, I kind of look at how the week went. I kind of reflect on the week. I kind of, yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah, mine is, mine is Monday. Get back to patient load, get back to seeing people. I call it cracking backs and necks. Boom, get in there and go. Right. But that's the thing is when you have your favorite day of the week, you, it still says you're passionate about what you do. Yeah. And I worked with some doctors, and they're like, ah, oh, I had this patient here, ah, oh, it's a problem. When, you, when people start talking about problems just in general, if you're not in practice, in practice you have to kind of empathize and sympathize with what they're doing. How does it make you feel when people talk about problems outside, just like in general? Especially having two small kids and, and you're passionate about your practice. It's a lot of introspective. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe what I thought was a problem, maybe not, maybe isn't. <laughs> you're, you're a very sympathetic person. Yeah. You're empathetic yeah. too. I, People talk about problems outside my office. I go, man, it's like it feels like kryptonite. I'm like, you're just it's draining sometimes. Versus finding solutions for your problems. Right. You know, it's being grateful every day too. Does your wife work? Stay home? Yeah, she she works. Uh, she works from home. Okay. She's okay. a mental health therapist. Fantastic. So yeah. All right. She gives a lot of therapy herself too. She helps you out. Uh, she's always yeah, she's <laughs> giving me honest. Yeah. And do you have staff in your office or works work by yourself? By myself. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. What are your hours like, Norma? Monday through Friday. Uh, uh, Monday to Thursday. Monday, okay. Yeah, Monday awesome. Thursday. Oh, that's why Thursday is your happy day. Yeah, God, yeah, that's your Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And basically 8.30, you know, uh, 8.30 until noon, have a yes. lunch, and then uh, 2 to 6. Good. I like that two-hour lunch, too. Yeah. Take a power nap? Uh, well, not really, honestly. I, I don't know what I'd do without a power nap every day. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. Acquired in my life. Yeah. It's me. It's me. And then with yours, too, going back to your workouts, did you always do that, or did you start that no, this more? Is newer. This is newer. So why? Uh, We've all gone through it. That's I know yeah, why, but why? Yeah, no, it was. Uh, hmm? It was just uh, prioritizing myself. Hmm? You know, after after because they're both girls, my daughter. Okay. So once they started school, mm -hmm. it was like okay, they're good now. You know, mm -hmm. but there was that. There was like. It's the like that, that little rat race there. That so, full. If you, everyone, everyone have anyone have kids here? If you don't have kids yet, take your time. It's, it's, it's work. We have, I remember my, I had one patient come in, and uh, it was right before COVID. I just remember it's it kind of detailed. He uh, came in, he was all happy having his first kid, and it's going to be great, best day of my life. I'm like, all right, we'll see. Comes in like a week after he has a kid, yeah. and he goes, can I just go in the back and sleep like an hour? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sleep deprivation is required when you have kids, yeah. I think. Did, we're both, both. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. And you had three, year, three years between, so you had a little bit of window, right. and then back into it. Yeah. It was like five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you guys going to have more kids? No, we're good. Ah, congratulations. Thanks. 
So, and, and go again back to why, why was stretching, working out, exercise, okay, now my kids are getting a little bit older, why is that important to you? Just my availability, mm -hmm. my availability to, the, mm -hmm. to the practice as well. Yes. Yeah. And then you have, so it's three years old, so you have another 15 years to go until your kid's at least out of high school. Mm -hmm. You gotta work at least that long? Right. You know, and if, 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 if I'm like, I don't have a pension, we don't have pensions, right, we're chiropractic, we're, we're, we're on our own, we have to work enough to get Social Security. You have many, many moves. You have a whole half life to live yeah. till then. Yeah. I'm getting closer, but not close enough. Yeah. So with your stretch, what do you stretch normally? How do you stretch? What do you do? I sit on the floor. I mm -hmm. do a lot of foam rolling. And, awesome. You know, just easy stuff. You know, yes. Touching toes. Uh, McKenzie stretches on my own. Yes. Um, you know, in the doorway with the shoulders. Perfect. Know, like that. Just the easy stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, between patients as well. Do you do it in the morning, in the morning when you when you I, get up? I do it after my walk. Got it, got it. Yeah. So walk, warm up, and then that, and boom, ready to go. Yeah. Perfect. My walks are uh, two and a half to three miles with my walk. Awesome. After, after we get, yeah. Awesome. You have a good routine. Yeah. You know, someone's been in practice for blah, whatever. It's a lot of it is you're, you're getting yourself ready for a long career. Right. I wake in the morning, stretch for 15 minutes. That's my routine. Go work out, cross for three days a week, and, and weights three days a week. And a lot of it is I have to stay healthy for my patients and for my own self. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I was in chiropractic school, bench pressing for my shoulder. Yay, first semester. That's great. It's a good idea. <laughs> no, but it was a lot of can I get over that and over time keep myself healthy now by stretching every day. Yeah. That's the key. When your patients, do you talk about stretching? Do you talk about working out? Always. Good. Why? Yeah. Because it's, it's a complement of the adjustment. And, yes. I, and I describe the adjustment like it's a fast stretch. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So then they kind of realize, okay, you hear these pops and cracks, but it's not your bones. Let's no. That'd be a problem. That'd be like, that's why I have yeah. a back door. Yeah, Call 911. Yeah. Let's get the heck out of here. Yeah. No. So just try to, just try to meet them there. Good. With that understanding. And then, you know, so yeah. yeah. A lot of it is, as, as you had mentioned, find out what they really want, what, what their expect, what their, what their perception is, mm -hmm. and then transfer that perception to what reality is. But give them a chance to absorb that and get them a chance, not, not to put them down, but this is actually what it is right. and how we can actually get them to understand the, the crack, the pop they hear on YouTube, yeah. all the YouTube videos they put out there, is not really what the benefit is. Right. Uh, do you talk about their goals or long term with them? Yes. Good. All the time. Uh, yeah, that's one of the first things I talk about. Like, what drives you? Good. Basically, you know, <laughs> what's the point? Fantastic. Yeah. Any more doctors like you out there? No. You know? Well, I get people that come in from the joint, which is which I have no problem with. That's that's I think they're a good franchise overall. They mark chiropractic well. But a lot of it is it's come in, exam, lie down, adjustment, go. Yeah. That's not that. That's not that. I call it the personal professional relationship you have with your patients. Yeah. Personal and professional. Yeah. When you can get that connection with them, they're coming here to see you to get healthier, not just get their one visit out of pain. Yeah. You know, I think that's when people focus on that, you have the connection with your patients, allows them to see the benefit of seeing you for their back pain, neck pain, but also, hey, doc, I want to lose some weight. Hey, doc, I want to get stronger. I want to sleep better. What else can I do? You know, sometimes you may have the answer, sometimes you may not, mm -hmm. but, you can leave, but they're coming because they give you that trust, correct? Absolutely. That's the key. Absolutely. You got it down. Whatever you're doing is working. How do you like to adjust? What's your, how do you like to adjust? What's your, what's your forte for adjustments? What do you like? From a thoracic standpoint, face down. Oh, um, good, good. But whatever you're comfortable with. I'm good, good. Yeah. I, do it, I do it all the way. Uh, it just, I think part of it is we have to keep ourselves healthy, like you had mentioned. When we do that, part of it is the adjustment for ourselves. I, I have done this about four or five times now with Veronica with her, her new seminar. And a lot of it is when chiropractors come in and want to get adjusted, they, they come in sometimes uh, not like you are, where they come in with problems where they have problems, where they have now a shoulder. I had a guy come in and had a bad shoulder problem. He couldn't lift his chiropractor, solo practice, couldn't lift his arm above his head. I'm like, are you taking care of that? I was like, eh, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, uh, don't think about it. Take care of it. You know, or a back problem or a leg problem. You know? So I was a guy with an ankle problem. But a lot is we have to take care of our own bodies, not just worry about our patients sometimes. Yeah. Right? So have you had your neck adjusted seated before? Yes. Good, good. Are you okay with that? For sure. Cool. Any headaches? No. Good, perfect. No, you're doing well, sir. I'll give you my card. I'm going to stop by see your office. Mm -hmm.
right there. Easy stuff. How much is palpation important in your practices? How much do you spend doing this with your patient after the ex exam, x-rays, whatever it is, and walk them through what you're doing? A lot of it, I, work, I have a buddy of mine, he works for a big, uh, big pediatric uh, network. He's their liability officer, even though he's a medical doctor, because a lot of, a lot of pedi uh, pediatricians get sued. Why do you think that is? A lot of it is sometimes a pediatrician doesn't communicate with the parents and the, and the child, obviously the child's the patient, um, what they're doing. We can verbalize what you're doing. It helps you a lot, not with liability, just communication. So when I'm here, what I'm doing with you, as you guys already do this, I'm feeling exactly where the bones are telling me where to go. You go to the doc and they'll say, how do you know? I'm like, I've done this for a few years, you know? And they go, I always tell them to, I joke in a little bit, depends on whether, whether their perception is, is, don't worry about it. When I adjust you, I have good malpractice, I'm covered. Don't worry about it, I'm good. You know, got to have some jokes here and there. Yeah. Not that what would life be. So I'm going to go right here. You feel that? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and same thing. I, this is just unconscious to me. I just go, do you feel that? They go, yes. Okay, that's where I'm going to adjust the bones, move things around. When I tell them to, I'm, even though I'm standing here on your side, I'm gonna adjust from this side, from your from your right side, I'm gonna adjust those bones first. Mm -hmm. Boom, mm -hmm. piece of cake, easy. No. Take a deep breath in, Steven. All the way out, sir. Let's go right here, just like that. When was your last adjustment? Two weeks ago. Fantastic, where do you go? I go to my, so I actually yeah. drive out uh, to Newport. So I'm in Upland, so I'm a little bit close to Newport, yeah. so yeah. stop anytime. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, me too. For sure. And then deep breath in again. Let's get that side. Good. Right there. Perfect. Is that okay? Great. What did I say after the adjustment both times? What did I say? Was that okay? Was that okay? Is that good? Mm -hmm. And that's like my blah, my guarantee. That's what I do. Face down for my friend. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's just it's 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 taking care of our own health too. That's the key. Working in practice together is always helpful. I work with a partner, so Looks out really nice. Yeah, a little tight. Do you, you guys, do you also do, Stephen, do you do a leg link check with your patients? Yeah. Perfect, yeah. right there, it's like that. And, it's, and if you guys are doing this already too, what I'm seeing with most people, we're all off a little bit, correct? Yeah. We're not perfect all the time. My wife says I'm off a lot, but that's more mental. <laughs> all right, that's, she's not in mental health, but should be. So here, what I'm seeing is hi, higher left, and lower right, okay? Higher left, lower right. So it tells me we're a little bit here, a little bit here. All right, so we wanna get that more even over time. And I'll show them in a second too what I tell my patients, how I present that to them and an image. All right, let's get that mid back on first. Nice and even, pretty good. If you have patients that are juveniles or kids, do you, do you walk through their parents what you're doing? So I'll tell my, I'll, say, I'll tell, hey, hey, Mrs. Jones, come in over here. Do you see this? Yes. When I do this, does that even out? Pretty much, pretty good. Okay, that's telling me, Mrs. Jones, that this is off here, in that area. Any questions about that? No. So I want them to understand. I want my parents of my patients to be their best examiner, posture analysis. Because I want them to understand you're the parent, not me. You're going to see your kids every day. So check your kid's leg length. Check your kid's back. Make sure their back is even here. It's not off one way or the other. Basically, they come with scoliosis issues, correct? That's the number one thing. With parents that have kids scoliosis, they just don't know what to do. They come to you for, for help. You're teaching them how to help their kids stay healthy, especially long term. All right, my friend. Right here. Take a deep breath in. All the way out. Good, deep breath in, all the way out. Deep breath in, all the way out. Good, one more time, just to make sure we got it all. Good. What am I doing too here, and see if you can't see this yet. Do you guys do this? Do you guys put your leg on the table when you adjust somebody? Hmm, when you're older, you'll understand. When you do this, it protects your lower back. If I'm doing this here, 
my back is exposed, causing more pressure. If I'm here, there's no pressure on my back. I had a patient come in, she, she's helping her, her aging mom get out of bed every day, get out of a chair. I have her help her, I tell her, hey, we gotta start doing this more when you help her up out of bed. Because by this, that point your back is, is being, your pressure on your leg, not on your back. When you adjust someone 60, 70 times a day, you'll, you'll thank me, all right? On your side facing, let's face uh, me, let's face that way first, to your left, to your left, yeah. Yeah, so, so I was keeping what I was doing, is when I'm adjusting you, and you guys do this right probably too. I always put my leg here when I adjust somebody. Okay, yeah. That point of protecting my back right, right, from causing any issues. Yeah. This one might adjust, might not. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I don't know how to adjust this one. Uh, I might go this way. There we go. Shh. Those fancy tables. Do you have just a flat table? Do you have a high-low table? I have a flat table. Me too. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Did you ever get your, your tables reupholstered? No. I have one. I have, it's a Frank Polstry in, in Ontario that I use. Let me know. Okay. If you need it, let me know. Oh, nice. Really okay. cool. Beer. Old guy has his own little warehouse. Okay. He's like retired. He's like, I just do it for fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <That's laughs> right here. What I do too, again, same things, knees here. Yeah. Show the side too. I always use, if possible, my forearm along with my, 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 the right below my wrist versus my hand all the time. Mm -hmm. But I need to, I'll use my hand, not a problem. But I want to make sure, again, I want to make sure I practice for a long time. At that point, I want to make sure I, I use my whole body the whole time. So I go here first, just like that. A little table for me. One more breath in, sir. All the way up. Right there. Good. Oh, sorry for me too. So, and in, in, in what I was, seeing, I, was, I was showing them earlier too, is right now you're a little bit here, this way, right? Okay? If I'm here this way, as I walk to my patients, do the same thing. If I'm here this way, not only am I higher, I'm also rotating to my right. Problem is my body's not going to stay here. It's going to come back here to feel more balanced in my head, so I'm causing more torque in my lower back. So I tell my patients I'm going to give them a stretch to make their legs more even over time too. All right? Here too. Then get this to the drop. Actually, I'm going to have your leg drop off the table for me. I always do this now, have them drop their leg to the floor as much as they can, because it saves my back again, right? If your leg's up here, you guys already know this, here, I'm having to come all the way over your back. Where's my body? Bad position. Okay. If I'm here, my leg's dropped, I can drop right on your leg. My body's still up. Mm -hmm. Deep breath in. All the way out right there. Is that okay? There go. Good. There grab go. a seat, grab a seat. You You're welcome. Grab a seat, grab a seat. We're not done yet. Steven, don't leave. Let's do your shoulders too. How's your shoulder range of motion? Good? Good. Do you do a broomstick stretch? Yes. Good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. So let me bring your right hand to your right ear just like this. During COVID, did you have to, did you have to communicate with your patients differently during COVID? Yeah. You, they, they couldn't see us anymore if you had to wear a mask in your office. So you had to use, some people, some people that you had to use your hands, your different ways to visualize, different ways to mimic what you want or have your patient mimic what you're doing too. So have my patient do this, bring your hand to your ear, Stephen, just like that. Bring your elbow in for me, sir. Take a deep breath in, all the way out, like that. Arm up here, deep breath in, all the way out. Yeah, a little pressure, just like that. Good, other side for me too. Hand to your ear, deep breath in, all the way out. Right there, up here too. Easy. Is that okay? We all have shoulder issues. You push on people all day. So when you come to my office, I'll remind me to do your shoulders too. Okay. Any questions? Sure. No. I'll give you a card too. I'll give you all the cards in the back afterwards, but here is on my card too. I have my cell phone, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, podcast, everything. Awesome. Put it all in there. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. I'll Appreciate see you soon. Yeah, sounds good. And give me your card on the way out too. Okay. Any questions yet? Do you guys give your phone number out to your patients? Some people do, some people don't. It's up to them. I do because one thing, it, it's, it's, and I, I empathize if you're a woman chiropractor, just be careful out there. There's a lot of weirdos, you know? But as a guy, I'm comfortable doing that because I want my patients to come to me first with a question. It's a, it's a long weekend. It's a Saturday. My patient who's a desk jockey who works in desk all day decides to build a block wall. I want him to call me first or text me, hey, Sunday morning wakes up, he goes, my back's killing me. What the heck did you do? 
build a block wall. Okay, I'll see you in a couple hours maybe, or maybe on a Monday based on how you're feeling. So you have, have your, having your patients access to you all the time, giving yourself a number, they're never going to call you or text you unless there's an emergency. But if they have a problem, they can't reach you, they're gonna get upset. Because I don't check my office answering machine on the weekends, nobody does. But having access to my cell phone number, now they don't have an excuse why they didn't text me or call me. Or I tell them to go on Google, go on Yelp. They have notifications, send me that way. I had someone come in on a Monday, a real nice guy, he works at UPS, and he was saying, he came, up, came inside and uh, got adjusted. He was like, man, I am so mad. I go, why, what, what happened? I, went, I was sore this weekend, went to the ER, and took three hours, gave me medications, and I felt, felt the same when I left. I came here for 10 minutes, got adjusted, and I feel 10 times better. I go, what an, I get, he goes himself, what an idiot. I'm like, just don't do that again, Sarah. You know, it is something, when you give ourselves the opportunity to get access to our patients, allows us them to realize you're, again, what are you doing? You're connecting with them on a personal, professional level to make their life easy. And going back to this, does this make more sense now? What, what, how I run my, how the adjustment is part of getting them here so they leave like this every time they see you. I've seen a patient, my senior patient in my office, uh, Marilyn, Colleen, and Robert. They come in every Monday. And I go, how come you guys keep coming back? I see you guys like once a week. And jokingly I say that because they do have some issues or They've gone through some things, police officer, disability before to permanent disability. They go, they go, Doc, I just want to come and talk to you. We talk about movies, you talk about the, norm, the recent Dune movie, what are movies you're watching this week, what kind of shows you're watching, and the adjustment obviously too, but it's, it's the conversation you have with your patients, conversations you have with your patients that allows them to like you. Do you want your patients to like you? Is that a good thing? I think so, yes. We get them to like us, at that point, they want to see us, and like Stephen, ask for our help. I had someone come in, you treat uh, kids for coughs, when they have bad coughs? Do you treat your kids? Do you, does it make sense to your patients why you treat someone if their kid has a chronic cough? What's that? What do you say? What do you normally say? What do I tell them? Yeah. How do you, how do you link their cough relief by an adjustment? What's your... Mm -hmm. How is that? And then why do some chiropractors, and I do too, not do that? Why do you think that is? Or just in general? And sometimes it's because the chiropractor doesn't believe that, that I don't know the philosophical connection, but that secondary connection that they don't trust their own, I guess, their own science. Would you call it science or philosophy? I think it's both, but I think it also depends. Our school is not where you learn that. So if that's all you did and you never saw a different version of chiropractic, then I would assume it would be hard as a doctor to say that, talk about it, say it well. How did you learn it? Nice. I saw it full force. And that was back in the early ten, early two thousands, or uh, when I worked for him. Yeah. Uh, it was twenty years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, and did back? Did she go to Cleveland? Did she go? She went to Cleveland. Yeah. Went to Cleveland too. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. You guys don't look that old. College and health, Botox helps, I guess. <laughs> no Botox. Whatever, whatever. Cause I'm getting, <laughs> getting. But a lot of it is th those old school chiropractors. When I say old school, oh, yeah. more than twenty years ago, they part of their schooling. And I'm saying, I know, yeah, in a, in a respectful way. <laughs> a lot of it is part of philosophy, I think, was part of their education. We got great philosophy at school, yeah. Yeah. but I think our class was the last to get it. Okay. It became more of like, hey, let's get kids in and out, let's get them past the boards and get more kids in and out. It's more, and it became more science based, per se, without the philosophy. More PT based. Yeah, more PT based. Right? I've heard a lot, of, a lot of people coming out of school now going, like, we didn't learn about chiropractic. We have no idea what it is. 
But and again, that book, like Dr. Trejo's book, there he uh, wrote in 2020, talks a lot about he is probably actually he's my age, 50 years old, and he talks about what he his dad was a chiropractor, practiced in Japan, and understood the philosophy of chiropractic about it over here. So when you get that philosophy plus the technique and the science allows you then to, if you're comfortable and confident, promote that to your patients as a way to stay healthy, helping someone whose kid has a cough versus just an adjustment. That's a big difference, right? People can talk about, this is called, and again, this is people that come to me from the joint sometimes, I got the adjustment, didn't help. What did they say it was? They just said it was gonna release pain, didn't help me at all. They understand the link of, okay, it's gonna take time, how to explain it properly, so the philosophy allows them to realize the link of the nervous system, autonomic, sympathetic, parasympathetic, all of it, so long term the body can stay healthy. And I do with my kids from a from a parent perspective too, but I talk to Stephen, is I tell people, okay, bring your kid in, let's, let's see what's going on. And then before you even understand the science or the philosophy behind it, I go, let's let's check your kid's posture, right? Posture is huge with kids, I think. By doing that, then the palpation. And even, I even have patients, I even have parents go, okay, I'm feeling this here. Try this too and see what you feel. I want to them to understand what I'm doing with their kid. Because they don't know me, but they want help with their kid. And by understanding the link of, okay, here's, here's the problem here. Do you feel that? Yes, I do or yes, I don't. This is, we're going to link this to nervous system. This to the kid's lungs, the trachea. Um, how the body responds to, to overall body stress. Does your kid eat well? Does he, take, does he or she take vitamins? What's your, what's your kid's health like right now, too? Do you go over that with your patients, too? Yeah, we're a pediatric gentleman office, but <laughs> and then, we use the Insight scan for the feet for the... Awesome. What's Insight scan? What is that? It's the array before the sleeping station. Nice, perfect. Awesome, awesome. We show a lot of stuff like that. I love those, those things, even though I'm very simple chiropractic office, because you get the education behind that, too, which is huge. And you, could you learn that and become certified in that, I think, allows you to be more confident when talking to people, yeah. just in general, per se. It's amazing, when I, whenever I go somewhere outside of chiropractic, and someone tries to that, sell me something, or we do something, and someone tells me about a good product they have, sometimes I'll just buy it because they're, they're confident in their product. I'm like, good for you, you know? Just something, it's, it's good to hear someone confident in what they're doing, by having that done. See what I was talking about, too, is with, with understanding the philosophy and the science behind chiropractic, when we get both of them together, allows to help, again, with kids. I, I, have, a, I have a chiropractor locally, uh, uh, Dr. Jared. He's a big pedi pediatric guy. Kadrick, Kadrick, you know him? Mm -hmm. Very good guy. And he, I, I send all my kid patients or mom patients to him. A lot of it is allows, when you have someone who's a specialist, be comfortable sometimes sending someone to someone that you can trust and know because you want the patient to get better no matter what. Yeah. Everything, everything. I go, this is eh. This guy, this guy's, this guy's focused on this. What he does, and and a lot of us, we we can sometimes be a jack of all trades. But when you're a master of one, that point allows you to really help your audience and gives you more reliability in what you do. Get them better every time. You know, with with chiropractic, as you guys already know, it's a huge profession. We have people doing in our field so many different things. Some things I don't even understand what they're doing. You know, I have to do activator, which is great which is other things they do um, where a non-touch technique. You're gonna have someone come in and to explain the machine uses for chiropractic, machine uses for chiropractic care. So a lot of it is, I'm not saying they're good or bad, but can we help someone understand this may benefit you more than what I'm doing with you now. As someone comes in for just activator every time. So I'd learn how to do activator. You know, but when you practice long enough, you're gonna have people come in your office that may, that may not be a chiropractic patient for your practice, to making sure you work with people in your network, with people in your area, like Dr. Kavrick, like Stephen Foran too, that can help them maybe a little bit more what they need. Does that help you build a practice long term? I want to say yes. I remember two patients came in probably about 10 years ago, both in pretty bad shape. A lot of neuropathy, a lot of atrophy, um, a little bit older too, and I think one was about 61, 62, one was in his mid 50s, had a problem for a long time. Coming, us, coming to our office, with like the last hope before surgery. And both of them just, it just happened by the time they came in, it was kind of too late. So I said, hey, I'm gonna treat you for a couple weeks, see if things get better. If not, we're gonna call it and kind of see what you wanna do next. And once, and both had surgery, 
And it's a good thing we don't want to hear that. But both surgery, and they both called me and go, hey, you know what? Thanks for trying. Thanks for putting the effort in. And thanks for letting me know what I should be doing. And giving the confidence that you actually, you help them sometimes by helping them understand a better long-term solution. When you treat someone in your office, you sometimes go, if they're like, eh, are they my patient or not? Are they a chiropractic patient? Had it for a long time. Atrophy, um, a lot of weakness too. Foot drop maybe also, or hand uh, weakness. I go, we'll give you kind of a two-week, I, I always tell them, I'm going to give you a two-week trial period. If this isn't working within two weeks, you're, you're, not, you're not a chiropractic patient right now. Not in my office. At that point, maybe an MRI is due. Maybe you're looking for other imaging for one too. Or through a referral. At that point, you want to make sure you give them a short-term expectation. I do. At that point, long-term expectation if, if this doesn't go where you want to go. Because if somebody's coming at that point, they're coming in kind of desperate, looking for a last-ditch last, last ditch effort. We can get, get them to understand this is a, this is a chiropractic field of specialty, correct? We stay within our specialty. So one thing, we don't get sued, which would suck, but also making sure we keep our, our I guess our standards where we want to keep our standards. Does that kind of make sense? When we have that going on, we have a certain idea, especially long-term. I want to be a chiropractor for a long time. I don't have to move from office to office and blah, blah, blah. But I want to be a chiropractor in my, in my area, location, for a long time. I want to be known as a good healthcare practitioner. So when I ever retire, people go, man, I'm going to miss that guy. My patients tell me, never retire, doctor. I'm like, someday I'm going to, but not yet. You know, a lot of it is when you have that reputation, I think a lot of it is you, they want to make sure they get to see you. And if they see you, they know they can trust you for one also. Right. Anyone who wants to get adjusted? Anybody else? You guys all good? Cool. Good. Come back, sir. Where do you practice, my friend? Vecula. Vecula, awesome. I saw your San Diego hat. Sorry about that. I'm a Dodger fan. You're good. You're good. How long have you practiced for? How long have you been practicing for? A year and two now. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Went to LA, went to, uh, LA or where'd you go? Uh, awesome. Awesome. Are you from the originally or from here? Born and raised San Diego. Good yeah. for you. Why, why did you go to life? Uh, networking. Awesome. So one of my mentors, um, long story short, sure. he, I helped him move out in. here. Yeah. Out here. Okay. So I, so two weeks after I met my wife, mm -hmm. she was working at the chiropractic office. Okay. She texted me on a Saturday morning. She was like, hey, my boss is home moving. I'm like, it's Saturday morning. I don't want to take those off. I'd love to. Yeah, and then she's like, <laughs> he's chiropractic, he'll pay you. And I'm like, I'll pick his brain. I just come out of undergrad. Awesome. Well, so you're, when you're undergrad, you go back. What did you want to do when you're in your undergraduate? So the, big, the funny thing is, if I'm into undergrad, I want to be a pharmacist, right? Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Making uh, money. And then between, well, I ended up going, wanted to do nursing, took a couple courses, and yeah. I was like, nursing's not for me. Like, Why? Just the stories I'd heard, and then just a lot of uh, medication things like that just didn't yeah. resonate with me. Yeah. And then took time off, uh, so I met the chiropractor. First truck ride over to the new place. He's like, you didn't know this, but you're gonna go to school in Georgia. You're gonna run the club that we have there. Uh, I took it to like the liaison club that helps um, students that we were with that doctors in the area. Got it. Got it. And then you're gonna work with the company. I'm like, I just met you. Old yeah. Old I just, well, you, do you know who I am? What's your name again? Uh, Marco. Marco? Yeah. Tony, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's awesome. Um, so what, what was your response? I'm like, uh, is this guy crazy? Slightly, yeah. Oh, and he's like, quack, quack chiropractors? No, and he's like, if you don't believe me, come check out my office. I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. So I checked out his office, and I'm like, this is what I want to do. Wow. So, Why? How did that click? Just the patient care, the education, just the vibe, everything about it. Mm -hmm. It just felt so welcoming, so friendly, and not like a doctor's office. Like a wellness center. Yeah. Did yeah. people leave happy? Oh, yeah. Versus like if like said nursing probably other stuff too. Yeah. We have people like ugh. And not only it's did depressing. they leave, not only did they leave happy, but they were happy waiting. Ah. Whereas any other doctor's office, everyone just looks miserable. Like, Mopey. Yeah. So it, it's amazing when you get that vibe. Yeah. And you go, okay, this is actually how I want to feel when I practice, yeah. right? Yeah. When I want to go to my occupation, my career for yeah. one too. And you went to life. Why? Why life? Did he go life? Yeah, life. Okay. Yeah. Why did he? Did he go there, or yeah, how did you pick there. life? Okay. Yeah. So he went there. Almost everyone I know went to life. Wow. So knowing nothing about the school, knowing nothing about the state, I uh -huh, applied, yeah. got in. And Georgia, then, correct? Yeah. They're from San Diego. Yeah. Let's make sure. Uh, they have fees. <laughs> they have fees. Uh, they have fees and seasons, and 
it was a culture shock, but it yeah. taught me a lot just being on my own and being independent. So wow, uh, learned a lot. It's definitely worth it. How's the education? Really good. Wow. A lot of okay. philosophy, a lot of hands-on, a lot of um, obviously every school has its flaws. Yeah. But and obviously students there were. Just they're profit organizations. They're profit. They're making money, money, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like every school has their goods, every, and it's like every school has their good sides, downsides. Yeah. I mean, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Our, our campus is like in the middle of a forest kind of thing, so I can, if I was stressed, just go for a walk, be in nature. Oh, dang. So. The LACC was like, you go for a walk to make it shot. <laughs> then LA, you got to run. You got to keep yeah. your head in a swivel. Yeah. That's awesome. Did you cut, did, are they year round or are they, are they take summers off? Well, uh, school. What kind of practical are you? Uh, no, so it's like. How's your school? I don't know. Oh, yeah. no, it's at um, quarter system. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. So we'll go three months and then like a week off and another like two or three months, two weeks off kind of thing. So. Cool. And then summer's off, or you work, or score to keep going? Four quarters a year? Yeah. Boom, done, done, knock it out. And it's a five-year program, four-year program? Uh, three and a half. Cool. Three, it's yeah. like LACC, too. Yeah. And then part of it, too, is is uh, did you intern there or come back and intern here? So I interned. So we had to do three months in the state of Georgia. Got it, okay. And then if you had all your credits and everything uh, done by a certain period, you can uh, intern anywhere in the country. That's awesome. So I did my last three months in Tampa. For, wow, why yeah. Tampa? Uh, one of the, so I'm part of a, I don't know if you've heard of it, 100% chiropractor? No. So it's I live in a tunnel. Uh, a hole. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, nationwide, we have 130 offices. Awesome. And one of my mentors, or one of like the OGs in the company, yeah. like super high up and everything, he's in Tampa. Yeah. And I met the guy, and I'm like, you and I are total opposites, but I'm going to learn a lot from you. Why, why did you like that? Because if I'm more someone who's <laughs> a lot like me, yep. it's all my quiet, introverted, you know, like that's cool and all, but I don't learn. I need someone to push me. Mm-hmm. He's very extroverted, likes to go party kind of thing, and mm-hmm. that helps me grow. So it's yes. like, I know my weaknesses. I know my strengths. I'm very quiet, mm-hmm. but putting me in a situation where I have to be extroverted or whatnot, yes. um, I'll do what I have to do. Kind of it's thing. almost you learn more when you're uncomfortable exactly. than in your comfort yeah. zone. If, if someone chooses to do that for yeah. one, too. So you intern there for how long? Three months. Three months. Well. Then, then do you graduate after that? Or yeah, was the, right after that. And so. then do you move back out here right away? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, then you, and you started working right away, too? I took a month off just to yeah. burn out review. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, I took okay. a month off. And then I started, I was doing, it took me a while to get my license just because California is California. Yeah, different. So, so it's not, is it, because when I came out of school, it was more like it's a national license and like that from Georgia to here. Yeah, and then so California requires specific PT credits. Oh, okay. Um, which I thought I had done, but my school was like, oh no, there's actually a second. Uh, there's another class that you have to take for that. Oh, somewhere. getting school flaws. Got it. Of course. Yeah. Um, so I had to take that and study back like about four or five weeks. Okay. That's didn't. not bad. No, I mean, it's quick. All yeah. online? Uh, no, I had to go in person and do like the actual. Like PT stuff. Yeah, yeah. So luckily I knew so like I knew a dog and I was like, hey, can I go in for a day and just do my thing? So yeah, yeah. It worked. So cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. So once you start practicing, you practice solo. With, I'm an with associate. I'm an associate. Awesome, yeah. awesome. How do you like that? Um, it's it's, it's really good. Uh, good. So I, I get to learn a lot. Yep. Um, at the cost of their mistakes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Right. But um, their first year right now we're on pace to be making 1.8 million in collections. Awesome. So we're high volume. Fantastic. A lot. I'm in charge of all the PI stuff. Good. So, and, and how do you how do you like high volume? It's good. It's good. It teaches good. me a lot because I I remember in school like internship wise people would be interning in offices that were super slow, Ugh. and then so their numbers are low, and I'm like, look, I'm getting my hands on. I get to yes. learn. Education is different. It's like a puzzle, and that's what I like. Yes. It's like how can I help you if you're different than this person, so on and so forth. So on a busy day, we'll see upwards of 150, 160. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. And then part of it is, as, as you know already, yeah. become an expert at anything. Expert yeah. is experience plus knowledge. Yeah. You're gaining experience. You're going quick. You're going, going, going. That's yeah. great. How do you take care of yourself? What do you do? I'm sorry? What do you do to take care of yourself, your health? Um, so our office on Tuesdays, we're closed in the morning. Yep. And, mm-hmm. we open, and our massage therapist opens up their schedule to work on us. So. Why is that important? From, from your perspective, also the main doctors or yeah. the owner's perspective. So why is that important? It gives us time to just recuperate and refresh. Yes. Um, on top of the high volume, I work. I go to the gym five, about four or five times a week. Mm-hmm. So my body's always getting beat up. Good. And I do the majority of the adjustments in the office, mm-hmm. which you know it is what it is. You gotta keep working. Yeah. And then, how do you stretch? What do you normally do for stretching? Um, I do. I do more. Um, so for shoulders, I do like a lot of arm circles. Awesome. Um, same thing with hips. I try to do um, just a lot of QL. Core, Good. Okay. Um, adductors, 
It's a pleasure. Doing everything right, my friend. This is you. And what's sore at the end of the day for you? Mine, mine's usually my like legs, uh, hips, maybe shoulders too. Sometimes feet. Sometimes yeah. Feet, just because yeah. I'm on my feet all day. Do you wear orthotics? Uh, yes. Good. Smart, smart man. Yeah. Do you do any events like triathlons, marathons? No. Something like that? No. Just work, work out. I like to run, but yeah. It's smart. Don't run. It's, it's painful. Painful out there. And, and part of it is you're, you're taking care of your body. Right. So you can do this for a long, long time. Do you want to stay an associate? Are you happy there? Or do you want to move up? Or what no, do you want to so do? We have our own uh, plan. Of, system. Okay. We have our own system. Like, I've talked to my bosses about what we That's want awesome. to do. That's awesome. They essentially want to have, like, their own. They want to open up more offices and awesome. be, like, a regional manager, so to speak. Fantastic. Just go from office to office and make sure everything's going well. You, you've earned the position. Thank you. There's no gifts in life. You know, you've done it. You've done it. How many people, when you, when you went to school, how many people did you graduate with that started with your school? How many people dropped out or... So I said earlier, just my that's. cohort had about 180. Okay, okay. Graduated with about 100, maybe. That's about right. Yeah. How about now, a year later? Are people still practicing or not practicing? Do you I keep track do, of them? I lost touch with You just like, kind of focus, work, work, work. Yeah, I just like, I have my own inner circle. Yes. And, like, if you're in it, you're in it. If not, like, I'm not. Gonna why is that important? I love that, but why? Why is that important to you? Life's too short to be having too many uh, fake acquaintances. Yes. From what I've noticed, I'm just like, look, if you know me, you know me. If not, like, best of luck. Complaining for me is kryptonite. When yeah. someone complains a lot, the kryptonite, it's like, it's draining. Yeah, I don't like to surround myself with negative people. It just, it's draining. I'm like, I don't like that. How do you keep your mindset good every day when you walk in the door? Music helps a lot. Awesome. I have to have the right, like, like the, the right music sets the right mood. Good. What's yeah. your music? Me, I like Latin music. Awesome. Yeah, like more upbeat and stuff like that. My bosses love country, and I can't stand it. Uh, painful. <laughs> that's the one thing we find Painful. That, that's the one like, thing we dang find it. So they're, they're Why do I work with these guys? The girls at the front desk, they play like Taylor Swift, Katy Perry. And all yeah. Like, I'm like... I'm too old plays, for that. Then my boss plays country, and I'm like... Can you just put the ear pods in? Like, hey, I'm just going to put ear pods, and you guys do your own thing. Yeah. But I'm <laughs> like, everything just goes well. That's awesome. And with your patient load, how do you keep things moving? We have to find our flow, just mm -hmm. like... I love it. Like, yeah. you see, it's kind of like serving tables, right? Mm -hmm. You remember who comes in at what time, yes. who does what, who needs specific tables. Like, I, for example, like we have a cock collection, which I'm, yes. the, I'm the only one who knows how to do that. What? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's I'll great. Go, like, all right, you three, you're going to be cock collection. I know you over there. So it's like, I'll set them up. Boom. And if we get overwhelmed, I'll have one of the girls like hyper both of them massage and Perfect. I'll be waiting. You kind of like, you have your system. Mm -hmm. It slows down. I can do a little bit more over here. It yeah. speeds up. I can go over here. You know, how to, you know how to run the strategy, per se. Do you have a rule with patients or with staff even, too? I have it. It's a five-minute rule. In regards to how long they wait? Because if, if, I, I have treatment yeah. rooms. I have private rooms. Yeah. If I'm in a room more than five minutes, get me out of there. I'm done talking. No. Uh, we have, <laughs> that's me. I'm done. We have open floor adjustments. Yeah. Good. So, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's a lot easier. Yeah. So you avoid all the chit-chat. Like, we, we try to do everything we can to minimize weight, but, you know, Sometimes you get those rushes where everyone in the mall shows up and you're just like. You got, I always tell them, like, you guys waited in the parking lot together yeah. and came in together. Why? Yeah. Why this? Yeah, so. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. You're doing everything right, my friend. Thank you. You're out, but you're, yeah. you're on track. I don't worry about you. you. Change paper out for you. When did you last adjustment, sir? Thirty. Awesome. Good. How often get adjusted? Uh, at least twice a week. Fantastic. How do you like it adjusted? What's your, what's your forte? Um, Good, good. Grab a seat for me. Grab a seat, grab a seat. That's one thing. And like, and Marco, correct? Good. Like Marco's doing, and do you guys have interns in your office that you kind of guide and help? Or are you open to that? Uh, we're not at that level yet. Uh, we've only, well, my bosses have only been practicing in California for a year or so. Okay, okay. So they're, they're just getting into California. Why? One of the, oh, they graduated about three years ago. So. Okay, okay. Are they more insurance-based, more cash-based? More cash-based. Awesome. Yeah. We, we guess, take some insurance, but... It's, you have the philosophy down to do that, which is phenomenal. And I think that if, if there were California doctors, they probably wouldn't be comfortable. They're coming from, for more, for more from Georgia, more from uh, life, or where are they coming from? Uh, all three of us come to life. Yeah. So that, I think that philosophy-based... Yeah allows them to come here and promote that more, which most chiropractic in California, we're not taught here about the philosophy. Yeah. It has to be an extra. Good, good. Oh, man. Wish you went to, wish you went to life. You know? Dang it. Go back to the future. Okay, if I adjust your neck seated? Yeah. Ah, you're feeling fine. Loose, a little tight there. No headaches, correct? No. Good. Oh, man. There we go. 
easy. Not bad at all. Ah, man. Deep breath in. Falling out there. Head drop a little bit more. Head back. Easy. So your shoulders wire up here too, sir. Hand to your ear. Deep breath in. All the way out. And do you see a lot of Hispanic patients too or other, other ethnicities? Um, not right now. Okay. We, have, we have our ways where we get a good amount of them. But. No. Yeah, it's, mine's like probably 20% Hispanic. Do you speak any Spanish? Yeah. Good. Fluent? Yeah. God, it's so much easier that way. Do you want your uh, mid-back face up or face down? Um, it's not easier for you. Just go on your back, on your back. Yeah, I, I, I had to... I learned Spanish probably the last like three or four years just to, just in the room communication if you want to. Sometimes, one time people come in and they go, and then I'm like, uh, let me give me a translator here. Give me a yeah. second. <laughs> Crush on me. That's awesome. Yeah, whenever there's Spanish speaking patients, I'm the one who has to take care of them. Phenomenal. Deep breath in. Well, especially Southern California, right? That's mm -hmm. number one language in Spanish. Good. Good. And then low back, been pretty good? I love my feeling a little tight. Okay. The drivers are fun. Ah. And then right here too, a little higher, a little bit lower. Do you do a hip flexor stretch when you do legs? When you do legs? Um, not as often sometimes, but yes. I, I'm a patient do just simple things, Marco. Go down the one knee, slide forward and push forward about 10 yeah. seconds between sets. Room keeps those steps even. We're, and you guys opened a year ago in California? February 2022. Wow, so you guys after COVID then, which is good. Yeah. A lot easier. So this is gonna be higher, lower. So you have to go this way first for me. Same thing, I just put my leg on the table. Do you do this with the leg? Not that I'm aware. I have to think about it, actually. Yeah, because that would just, I mean, long term, it would just save your back more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just try it and see. I don't know. Do the leg drop for me. And then same thing, I did my leg. That point it stays there. I just have to drop straight down like that. Other side for me, too. Right here, too. And then deep breath in. All the way out, leg drop. Easy. All right, thank, thank you, you, my friend. Appreciate it. Welcome, you're welcome. Keep up the work. Thank you. Right. See, so a massage therapist that goes in your office and, and works there throughout the day, too? Oh, we have three massage therapists in our office. That's great. Yeah. Is that easy or is that like extra work? Easy. Or both? Easy. Perfect. You run, not run them, but do you supervise them, too? Um, in the beginning, just to make sure that like they're okay with the flow of everything. That's awesome. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Good deal, good deal. Thank Keep you. up the good work, Appreciate my friend. It. Don't spend all your money at once, okay? <laughs> Not too much Bitcoin or something, I don't know. How are we doing on time, Veronica? We're doing good, we're doing good. Uh, another 15? Cool, perfect, good. Anybody else want to get adjusted? Everyone else good? Good, good, okay. Couple more things, again, is beyond chiropractic, um, what else can you do to communicate better with your patients to make sure they know you're a healthcare practitioner, not just a chiropractor. I have, like I said, I have a podcast, I do that. I send out my videos to my patients. Mark, do you guys send stuff to your patients too, or no? Uh, some patients we have like extra videos that mm. we send out to them. Very good, kind of giving that guidance too. But again, I love yours because yours allows them to get the adjustment, boom, understand what it is, and boom, get and go. Yes, sir? Would you ever be interested in teaching how to set up podcasts, the equipment? Of course. And Easy. All right, so I keep things very, very simple. What I and what's your name again? I'm Dennis. 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 Tony. Is I have a one I bought on Amazon. A mic connects to here. Has two mics for one. I use my phone. A tripod I've had for probably about five, six years now, and that's it. If you do them live, what I do is I have them come to my office or I go to their place if they're local, and I have them sit down and we do it just like this. I have a mic. They have a mic. Boom, we go. If, it, if we do it, sometimes I'll do it via Zoom or StreamYard, another platform like Zoom called StreamYard, where I can do it there and actually go live on Facebook too. And what I do is a lot of it is not just the videotaping or even just the audio, it's getting it to be seen different places. So what I do once I record, I have one coming up this Wednesday, is I record it and then from there put it on YouTube, but from there, then it becomes a podcast. Make sense? Of course, easy. All right, let me know when you're easy. I'll give you a card on the way out. Easy. I mean, mine is more. Yes. Well, I was just going to say, I have a left Good. Come on over. So, my thing is, I, I, there's, no, there's no overcharge for stuff, but a lot of it is keep it as simple as possible. I have people that want to do a podcast, want to do videos, want to be a healthcare practitioner, 
but they want the right lighting. They want the right camera. They want the right angle. They're not sure what they want a script for one, too. I don't waste any time. Just go for it. Yes, ma'am. Tony. Hi. Hi, Tony. Nice to meet you. What's your name? No. Diane. No. I'll just jump on her. I said, I've, I've good enough practice. I'm fine. No. What's your name? Diane Bellwood. Diane. Nice to meet you, Diane. And your SI joint, left side or right side? That's fine. Good. Let's have you go in. Let me put my paper down first. Let me have you go in your back in a second. Let's go right here. Let's have you go on your back, on your back, ma'am. On my back. On I'll my put back. your glass over here if you want. Make sure you don't lose them. And some people, and you guys probably are different too. Everyone has their personal preference. I like to see my patients for the first time and put them on their back so I can show them and tell them what I'm doing to them. If I do it on their stomach, they're, they can hear me, but they can't see me. So we talked about before, uh, Diane, same thing with the SI joint. If one side is higher, your right side's higher, left side's lower, I want them to see my hips being higher on my right, left side being lower to cause me to twist to my left, so I want to make sure my body comes back to my right. So I want them to the visual, not just the auditory. All right? Is that your husband over there, Diane? I'm sorry. Is that your husband over there? Yeah. He's a big I found guy. Him in the yellow pages. You did? Good. What page? What, what, what was the letter? What, what, what did you find in what page? I was C for chiropractic. C for chiropractic. Nice. 55 years ago. 55 years ago. It tells you how old we are. Yeah, 25. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. 82. Good for you. You guys made it. It's my mom's she's, age. She's 80, so be nice to her. I will. And he's a big guy, too, so I'll make sure I don't upset him, okay? Yeah. It's <laughs> so right there. So higher or lower. I'm going to have you go on your side facing me this way. There we go. Right there. That leg drop if you can. Real simple. Good. Deep breath in, Diane. Right there. Real simple. More of a hand contact. One more breath for me. Go. I'm going to put your hand here so I'm going to push in your shoulder. There we go. Deep breath in. All the way out. Good. Right here. There we go. Good. Does that feel okay? Yeah. Good. Other side when you're ready. Come on over. I move a little slow. No, you're moving great. <laughs> How do you stay healthy? What's your routine? Good genes. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, I take a lot of vitamins. Mm -hmm. I don't exercise Sad. on a regular basis. He doesn't listen. <laughs> We're he, married, my friend. I understand. He doesn't listen. He's obsessive compulsive about exercising. Me. So you do the opposite just to balance each other out. Yeah, right. Got exactly. it, got it, got it. And, and, and after 59 years, yeah, it's just, it's, you, you do whatever you can do. I'm the old guy in chiropractic. But you still practice, correct? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, we both do. Good, good, good. Where do you guys practice? Franchise. Perfect. Do you know Dr. Williams yeah. in San Dimas? I saw him at my last talk here. He's in his 70s, I'm going to say. So practices. Why do you still practice? Like it. Challenge. Uh -huh. Every patient is a challenge. Do you enjoy being practice? Yeah. yeah. This is the passion. We don't practice together. Oh, no, that's smart. Oh, yeah. That's smart. Why? S separate days. Same office, separate days. It would be more comedy if you actually worked together. Oh, my well, God. We are there every other Saturday. And it's interesting. Yeah. That's when I shut my mouth up. He's there, my daughter's huh. there, the front desk is there. Yeah. I just work, sit in the back, put your head yeah. down. I have a buddy of mine, him and his wife own a salon. I go there just at lunch for the comedy. Just the back and forth chit chat chatter. Yeah, on Saturdays when we're all there, including our daughter, it, so it's, it's, it gets interesting. You, your daughter, and anybody else, or just your husband, work together on Saturdays? Well, just the front desk. Okay, okay. But just the three of us. You guys pick on him? I'm sorry? Do you pick on your husband on Saturdays? Do you pick on him? Oh, of course. Good, just want to make sure. Well, my daughter's a chiropractor, too. So oh, my gosh. I'm in trouble. So yeah, good luck, sir. So good luck. <laughs> As long as you guys are having fun, right? Oh, Let's yeah. go here and I'll put your hand here. And one thing I do, I do also, making sure we don't push in the shoulder too much. Sometimes I forget. Go right here. That leg drop a little bit right there. That's it. Good. Excuse me. A lot easier on that other side for one, two. More of a stretch. One more time. I'm gonna. I went here before. Let's go here a little bit. Don't want to push too much? Just a little bit on that side. On your back one more time. Do you want to start stretching? To help your SI? Do I want to? Yes. <laughs> just, it's, I moved oh, it the one sure. way. I would. That's just me. Is, 
Are you okay over there, sir? I, 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 can, I can feel your pain. I can feel your pain. And you said it's more this side? Yeah, that's the side I moved the first time. So right now, if you, just for a simple stretch, when you're at work, so he doesn't see you, stretch. Bring your leg back here. No knee problems? No. Good. And your foot back here on your toe. How does that feel? It feels like a big stretch here, but I don't feel anything in the other side. Let's try the other side. Other side for me. Bring your leg off the side. And then foot back here. There's the face. I thought there was a push on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So by this being tight, this being loose, your hips are going to shift this way, causing more pressure on your left. So when you're at work, so it doesn't see you, one minute stretch both sides at least once or twice a day. Take a side of, side of, a better, side of one of your tables and let your leg sit there on your toe where it feels uncomfortable for about one minute. So if we're stretching this way, as you know, we're stretching the hip flexors in the front, also the SI and the lower back to make that looser. Questions? Do you want the mid-back done? I'm sorry? Do you want the middle back done too? Yeah. Of course. Cross arms. And then right here, deep breath in. More of the flat hand contact right there. A little bit right here. And one more right here, a little bit lower. Yes, so you need to. And you're all set. Coming up. All right. Thank you. So Enjoy much. all your vitamins and your one stretch you're gonna do for the rest of your life. <laughs> but that that's that makes sense with the tightness on that side? Yes. Okay. And then being being not your husband, you'll listen to me a little bit, right? Of course. Just want to wow. make sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. You know? But I think once once you understand and the feeling of being stretched, patients understand more from their, what they feel than what they hear. So it allows them to really, and again, every new patient is different, them to feel the need to do that. So when you see their face and go, ouch, or ow, or oh, they go, I got them. That's gonna help them feel better. That's what I would do, Diane, that's just me. All right, anybody else? One thing is, when you put, and again, everyone's different, put stuff on the internet, on the web, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, do you, is that part of your way you market or the way you sell your practice? What do you think? Both. Why both? Obviously, I'm doing it with an intent to guide you to what I'd like to know. And marketing is sometimes what my, my mentor, one of my mentors said, by marketing through education allows you to get the sale when they're ready. Everyone needs chiropractic, right? We all know this. It's not if, it's when they need it or who they even go to, who have they seen on the internet, who have they seen back in the day yellow page, who have they seen who are from their friends. At that point, it's, it's when they need you, they'll call you. By being marketing all the time, not I want to get sales you, hey, come and I have this offer going on all the time, but here's, here's a back stretch, here's an next stretch, here's this thing I helped with my patient, here's a testimonial for my patient too, allows them to realize, hey, this guy knows what he's doing, this girl knows what he's doing, it builds your reputation online until they really need you. That, I think that's what my mentor told me before. So without being salesy, can you market by educating, by showing stories of your patients getting better so they know it's not you saying it all the time, it's Mrs. Jones, it's Jerry, it's Jim. It's Sally. They're saying that you're a good chiropractor in the area. I, I, some people come on, call my office. They're chiropractic marketers. Dennis, okay, just one second. Chiropractic marketers, right? They want, to, they want to sell you how to get more visits, how to get more people in your office. And they always ask me, how do you always only have five-star reviews on your Yelp and your Google? I go, I tell them I have all their addresses. I know where they live. <laughs> they give me a bad review. I'm going to call them. I had one time I, I had someone... On a Sunday, because I had a notification to my, to my email, um, uh, one, someone, someone left a one-star review. I was like, what the, who is this guy? He had left a review for the same office name, I think in Indiana. He didn't realize he was leaving one in California. So I messaged him real quick, and I said, hey, I apologize your experience. I think you have the wrong office. I screenshot the review before I, he erased it. Came to my office meeting on Monday. I told him we, had, we got a one-star review. We talked about our meeting on Monday at our meeting. 
and they go, who was it? I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. Let them kind of stew a little bit. Let them stew. He meet him, told them. They go, that's not us. I'm like, it's not us, but it could be us. Stay on your toes all the time. Not one bad review, but what can hurt you, reputation, versus help your reputation? Just, just be wary of, of people that you, I guess, work with, even staff too, right? Sometimes staff, Marco, if you work with a lot of people, it's like, how is my staff representing me or this clinic or this profession in a good way or bad way? When I started practice and I bought my practice back in 05, 04, I fired the first four or five people that came in the office that were staffed there already or from before because they weren't representing chiropractic. My staff got mad. I'm like, ah, sorry. My partner, my partner works, his wife works for a big real estate company. She's the office manager. So she has like, they have liabilities, like, like mortgage companies, right? Big company. You have, when you have a big company, you have to do a verbal warning, a written warning, a sit down, and something else, and you can let someone go. My partner would go on vacation. I go, I just fired Sally. Sorry. And hang up the phone. <laughs> I wouldn't say any warning at all. Because when you, when, when you realize, like any office, your reputation is based on your first impression, right? Who's your first impression in an office? The person they call when they walk in the door. That's their first impression. Are they going to be good or bad? Two options. That's it. There's no in between. Let me, when simple say, when someone says they might get better, I go, no. <laughs> what is, when you're on, say, if you're younger, especially, if, if you're still young, even older too, at 82, is what was your first impression of your first date? It's going to be great. What happens after the first date? 30 days into working someone, 90 days, six months, it kind of gets like, ugh. You know, first impression is always great. But after that, it goes downhill. Dennis, question? Yep, come on up, sir. Of course. And a lot of it is making sure that we have, not only are we happy with what we do, people around us are happy with what we do also. You know, Stephen, you have it good. You're working by yourself, my friend. No staff. Fantastic. Congratulations. <laughs> Risk, my friend. Right there. Got it. Okay. Do you like the drop on it? It doesn't matter. Perfect. And then lean back a little bit more. Bring your head back a little. There we go. Thank you much. But that's it. Okay. All right, my friend. I had a guy come in uh, probably about a year ago. He was a shot putter for um, Azusa Pacific University up the street. And he was this big guy. Same thing, Dennis. He had a wrist problem from doing shot put. He was trying to get into the shirt department, but he couldn't do push-ups because it was hurting so much. He goes, can you adjust my wrist? I'm like, I think I can try. I had to like, do a double contact and like lean back and just, I popped it and it went clunk. I go, how did that feel? He goes, it feels great. I'm like, good. That's exactly what I expected. You know? Well, what's going to happen? I don't know. But something when, when you help someone at least try doing something, that's going to help them overall. But any other questions at all? All right. And you, got, you guys are great. Thanks, guys, for volunteering for one, too. Thanks for your information also. You have a long day ahead of you. You know, not very long. But, again, I hope this interaction with me today allowed you to give you a little bit more insight of someone who's been practicing for about 24 years now has gained the experience to help just overall patients. When you're with your patients, too, do you have fun? How do you not have fun in practice? Do you make jokes with your patients? Sometimes the, the patients aren't the butt of my joke. You have to know them well, right? When you, can t when you joke with your patients, like I do with my patients, Colleen, Marilyn, and Robert every day, every Monday, they leave, again, here, happy. They leave here feeling, hey, I had a, I had a good experience. When they leave and they smile, you know at that point the rest of their day, the rest of their week is going to be better than if they didn't come in. Can you make that your goal to make their week better by seeing you when they come in their office? Whatever it's going to be. Maybe for neck, back pain, neck pain, wrist pain, whatever it might be, even a shoulder too. So they feel that you can do this every time. Comfort always, adjustment or no adjustment. I think that's the goal of all of us. Okay, no matter where you live, where you work, been practice, a lot. If we can do that for our patients every time, at that point, do it well and have fun with your practice for the rest of your lives. Mine's mine's Monday, my favorite day of the week. Yours is Thursday, because that's the end of your week, my friend. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Right, Diane. I'll.